Now that the motor, ESC and power components of the Mini T4 are installed, it's time to start looking at what goes on the top deck with the flight controller and radio receiver. There's two more main components we need to make our T4 fly. Here we have a flight controller and this is a radio receiver. Now there's a huge variety of different options available to you here. For this build I've chosen an Pilot based flight controller. This is the, uh, the HK Pilot Mini from Hobby King. There are plenty of other options out there. There's a whole lot of multi-Wii based flight controllers and other ones like the, the KK2. I've chosen the, uh, this particular board because it's fairly compact and I'm a bit of a fan of the Argycopter flight controllers. But the reason I've chosen the D4R FlySky receiver is because I have a, a Tyrannus radio here which is what I'm using for my transmitter so it's compatible with that and also it's a nice thin package so I can actually mount this underneath the vibration plate on the Mini T4 and there's plenty of room in there for it. Okay so here's a quick overview of how these components fit into the rest of our T4 Mini build. It's the job of the radio receiver to listen to the signals coming from your transmitter and pass that information on to the flight controller. There are several ways that receivers can be connected to flight controllers so it's important to make sure that you get a combination of components that will work with your transmitter and your flight controller and receiver. A common form of connection between receivers and flight controllers is PWM. The disadvantage of PWM is that you need one connection cable for each radio channel that you're using. So at the very least you'll have four cables running between your flight controller and your receiver. Other options include PPM and SBUS and I'm sure there are more. I'm going to use PPM on this flight controller which allows me to have a single servo cable running between the receiver and the flight controller and that provides all eight channels of information from my transmitter. Now a lot of flight controllers like for example the KK2 here have servo connectors both for going out to the motors and also for coming in from the radio. Now the Argy Pilot, uh, the HK Pilot flight controller that I'm using here doesn't have that, they've used a smaller plug so I'm going to need to make up some special cables to go from these small plugs here which are actually where the radio connects into to my receiver but I can use standard servo cables for going out here to my motors. Now there are other components that I could add to this build and I will do those but I'm probably not going to do it as part of this video. For example I can add an external GPS and compass and I can also add a telemetry radio so that I can send more information back to my ground station. But for this video I want to focus on the basic components that you need to get a T4 Mini flying. I just wanted to show an example here of using the KK2 flight controller which supports being powered from one of its servo cables here directly into the motor 1 input and also when it's selected in the, uh, in the KK2's menu you can use a single CPPM uh, cable for the radio receiver as well. So quite a simple setup, those parts could just be uh, mounted on the top of the T4 and you would be ready to go flying. Here you can see I've mounted the radio receiver I just used some double sided tape, the same as we used on the ESCs and I've just routed the aerials using a couple of cable ties to keep them where I want them. I've just temporarily mounted this with some rubber bands there just to hold it in place. I'm actually going to make up a, a 3D printed case for this flight controller because it's got a barometer on there and uh, apparently with barometers uh, you're best to keep them out of direct sunlight and also to protect them from, from the wind so and that can affect the altitude reading that they give you. So I'm going to make up a case and put a bit of uh, put a closed self a bit of open cell foam or um, or cotton wool over the barometer just to stop uh, stop it getting interference from those factors. Okay, so here you can see I've made up a 3D printed case for the flight controller, and I've just used that double sided tape to attach the flight controller to the vibration plate. I've also added an XT60 power plug on the uh, on the battery cable there, and I've installed the posts on the motors ready to put the props on 
So I've just got to balance those before they go on. But before the props go on, uh, there's often some flight controller setup that needs to be done. So check your flight controller, have a look through its website, and you'll see what you need to do for your particular setup. Okay, so for the APM Arju Pilot flight controller that I'm using here, the place to go on the internet is copter.arjupilot.com forward slash wiki. And there you'll find all the information to help you get set up with your with your T4 or with the RG Pilot flight controller. The, uh, I'll quickly run through the steps. The first one is to install the Mission Planner software, which is available from a link on that website. From here, install Mission Planner. That will uh, not only install the Mission Planner software, but also drivers. So it's a good idea to install that first before you plug your flight controller into the computer. Once you've installed that software, the next step um, is to plug your your computer in and I've just opened device manager in Windows here so that when I plug it in uh, you'll be able to see that it creates a COM port down here uh, in this case it's the Arduino Mega 2560 COM 13 so I just noticed that appearing so then you start up the mission planner software which looks like this and you can choose the uh, the COM port that you just saw appear then in Device Manager, COM13. I'm not going to connect, con click Connect at this stage. The first thing to go to is the Initial Setup tab and to Install Firmware. That goes off to the internet to get the latest firmwares that are available. And here we see the Arducopter 315 Quad which is the uh, frame type that we're using here. So we click on that and that will flow, follow you through installing the firmware. I've already done that step so I won't do it again. After the firmware has been installed, you can then uh, click the connect button in the top right corner of Mission Planner. That will load some settings from the flight controller. And on the left hand side we'll see some new menus appear. Right, so there is a wizard here. I haven't actually been through the wizard but it, it will probably lead you through what I'm about to uh, about to look at anyway. Really just opening up the mandatory hardware uh, part of the, the menu tree here. In frame type, for the T4 we've got a, an X copter so we want to make sure that we've, we've got that selected here. The next one down is Compass for compass calibration. In my case I've got an APM with onboard compass and the next step is to do the live calibration which is a little bit of a dance here with the uh, with the copter. Uh, you can see it says click and move the autopilot around in all axes in a circular motion. And we get this little picture. So we'll see if we can uh, see if we can do this while still plugged into the plugged into my computer. Go that way. I'm never quite sure. Um, there's other videos on the internet of doing this, and uh, I'm not sure of the exact movements you're supposed to do. I'm wrapping myself up in the cord here, but I just go through basically just spinning it around in all directions. Uh, the Mission Planner software will tell you when you've got enough samples there. So basically rolling around from all sides in all four directions and then also pitching from all four sides in all directions. Okay, so that's now saying that I've got enough samples. So I can click on done there. And it tells me I've got new compass calibration offsets. The next step in here is accelerometer calibration. This one is just a little bit simpler. Calibrate accelerometers. Place the vehicle level and press any key. Place the vehicle on its left side and press any key. Place the vehicle on its right side. 
and press any key. Nose down, press any key. Nose up, press any key. And finally, on its back, press any key. Calibration successful. Okay, the next one is radio calibration. Now I've already bound my transmitter to the FR Sky receiver that we installed earlier. Welcome to Tyrannus. I won't go through the the uh, process of binding the transmitter to the receiver. There's plenty of information on the internet for doing that. But within Mission Planner now that we've that we're bound, we're seeing. Um, if I move my sticks here, we're seeing that we've got. Uh, in this case, you're moving backward and forward there. So we need to set the ranges of this in Mission Planner. So if I go to Calibrate Radio, and OK, it's saying to move all of your sticks and switches around to their full extent so that it can sort out what the range is for these things. Now I've also already set up uh, flight mode switches here on my transmitter. Again, that's too much to, uh, to try and go to on this video, but there's plenty of information on the internet about how to do that. Yep. I think that's all of the all of the things I've got set up. Click when done. Okay. And further on flight modes, once you've got the switches on your transmitter set up, you can flick through here and change modes, change how the, the copter is going to behave, uh, depending on if you've got a, a GPS installed then you can use uh, flight modes like um, uh, position hold to, to keep its position using the GPS. Um, the, the standard flight mode that I guess that, that people use is stabilize, which doesn't require any GPS, so that's what will be flying in mostly, uh, mostly here. We can also use uh, altitude hold because we've got a barometer in here. Uh, we can get the flight controller to hold its altitude for us, again, without needing the GPS. So I don't need to change those. And there's another option in here for setting up fail safes um, so that if you lose, lose radio reception or your battery's going flat, uh, you can tell the autopilot what to do for you. Again, with GPS, it can come back to you as well. The last one I want to look at actually needs me to uh, install a battery. <coughs> so I'm just going to put my battery here into the, uh, into the T4. You see I've just added a few little bits of foam padding. Um, just around the side of the battery, just to take up any extra space in the battery compartment. Uh, that's just, I'm just using this kind of stuff, which is a, a, a one-sided adhesive foam tape that they use for, uh, for window draft stop tape. So I'm just going to install my battery here and plug it in. So this is just to give the, the ESC some power so that I can spin my motors. So in the Mission Planner software, under optional hardware, at the very bottom, there is a, a motor test, and I can come along here and spin each motor one at a time, just for a few seconds, so I can check that all the right motors are spinning, and double check that I've got them spinning in the right direction. And that's all good. So I recommend that you uh, you follow through. The remainder of the Mission Planner, uh, sorry, the, the RG Pilot uh, wiki on the website. There's a huge amount of useful information in there, uh, not just about um, about setting up your quadcopter, but also about how to build one, and a lot more about flight modes and, and all of the other things that you can do with this quite powerful range of autopilots.